Right now at 11, state of emergency, what Portland's mayor is doing as hundreds of city workers prepare to strike. Also tonight, a better handle on homelessness outside city limits. Yeah, they are, there are people experiencing homelessness in every zip code uh, in every corner of Clark County. Then a woman takes over at the top of the Timbers and Thorns, what she's asking for from fans. And later, a Portland raised director with six Oscar nods and no one prouder than mom. This is him when he was a little boy. Tonight, we take you inside where he got his start. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Mulko, and we begin tonight with a disturbing case against a former Portland High School basketball coach, a man who U.S. Marshals tracked down today in Texas after he was indicted on 17 counts of sex abuse. Alma McCarty's in the newsroom tonight. Alma, what do we know about the suspect here? Well, David, the former coach Devonte Carter worked at David Douglas High School. Police say the charges stem from his contact with two minors. I found out the alleged victims are also blaming the district for not doing enough to protect them. According to the district, 26 year old Devonte Carter first began volunteering for the David Douglas High School basketball program in 2018 and was hired on as the junior varsity coach in 2020. In addition to his role at the high school, police said Carter worked as a coach for various basketball camps throughout the metro area. On December 19th, district leaders placed him on leave after they learned about the allegations against him. Detectives with PPB's Sex Crimes Unit investigated. Then a grand jury indicted Carter on 17 counts of sex abuse, along with charges of luring a minor and distribution of a controlled substance. On Thursday, officers found and arrested Carter in Webster, Texas. The facts of the two individual cases will come out in court. I anticipate that there are other victims uh, because that's the nature of predators. Uh, and this guy had wide ranging opportunities. Families of the two victims in this case are also making a claim for damages against the school district and have demanded compensation. They're represented by attorney Gregory Kafori. We have indications that they have plenty to hide, that they had information about this guy which was not acted upon, and that is going to be the subject of, uh, of our litigation. The district said Carter had cleared a criminal history verification and issued a statement reading in part, the David Douglas School District is fully cooperating with the Portland Police Bureau in the ongoing investigation. As a school district, our concern now is the health and well-being of our students, and especially those impacted either directly or indirectly. At this time, Carter is still in Texas and will remain there pending the extradition process. Anyone with information on these or other incidents should contact Portland Police. David? Alma McCarty reporting tonight. Thank you, Alma. Well, new tonight, Mayor Ted Wheeler has declared a state of emergency ahead of a potential city worker strike. The order allows the city to more quickly hire replacement staff and reassign existing city employees to provide essential services. Now, more than 600 Portland city workers plan to walk off the job as early as next Thursday if they can't reach a deal on a new contract. They're a part of Labor's Local 483 that includes sewer operations, street maintenance, and park ranger services. Negotiations have gone on for nearly 10 months. The city says it will not retaliate against any worker who chooses to strike. Meanwhile, the city is launching another so-called 90-day reset plan for a neighborhood that's really been asking for help. It's meant to address concerns around safety, cleanliness, and accessibility in the central east side. It includes things like better lighting, removing abandoned vehicles, and a heightened police presence. Now, this comes after a similar plan focused on the Old Town neighborhood last year. Here's what the mayor promised today. But in this area, we think the combination of awareness on the part of the business owners, working uh, with our graffiti abatement, litter collection uh, programs, taking advantage of, of the grants that exist to help restore storefronts to a pristine condition, and expanding our police patrols in the area, we think in combination will make a big difference. Well, in Old Town, the reset helped remove more than 18,000 square feet of graffiti and trash. The city says it also increased camp removals and placed dozens of people in shelters. By the way, the mayor could not provide an update timeline on the large sanctioned outdoor camps he is proposing for the Rose City.
In our homeless crisis tonight, the point in time count is now underway. We told you last night how the Tri County area is doing this all at once and they're using an app to speed things up. So today Blair Best headed across the Columbia for a look at Vancouver. It's the sound of new beginnings. It's been so long since I let anybody cut my hair and she's amazing. <laughs> An afterthought for many, but for homeless people like Vincent, a haircut means so much more. Caring, I think the, the sensation of caring. He's one of the homeless people recorded in Clark County's point in time count this year. That's the federally required survey of how many people are experiencing homelessness in the area. I had a long stint of it this last year. As he and hundreds of other homeless people take part in the count, they're also getting connected to services at Project Homeless Connect, this health and resource fair. Not only have teams of folks been out in the community today counting people where they are, they're also encouraging folks to come here to get counted and to access services and hospitality while they're at it. It's sort of a misconception that homelessness only exists in larger cities, say like Portland. Correct, yeah, they are. there are people experiencing homelessness in every zip code uh, in every corner of Clark County. Ask about the current living situation, where will you stay tonight? Is this your first time homeless? Uh, Kyle Peterson is one of the volunteers tasked with giving out the surveys. He works at a Vancouver community center for people in recovery. It's pretty awesome, I was really, I was really honored when they asked us. The count in Clark County happens one day every year in January, different than the biannual count in Portland that happens over a longer period of time. It really is just a, an opportunity to say, okay, every January, this is what homelessness is in Clark County and communities all over the country. The county will use all the data collected to try and get funding to help with the homeless crisis. Yes, systems can always be improved, but we've got to try something, right? Clearly there's a problem that's, that's going on in this area and we've got to try to get some uh, solutions going. <laughs> Solutions that for some currently I'm living in my vehicle feel unattainable right now. I, I sort of feel on display and you know this is anxiety you know, driving for me and I apologize for saying that because I, I understand and appreciate what, what's happening in the here and what they're doing to offer but it, it's still a difficult situation. The results of this point in time count will come out in May. In Vancouver, Blair Best, KGW News. We're hearing tonight from the Portland's Timbers and Thorns new CEO. Heather Davis is the first female leader in that organization's history. Now, she joined the club last year as the general counsel. As CEO, she'll run all business and operational aspects, including the sale of the Thorns. Owner Merritt Paulson has pledged to sell that team in the wake of multiple investigations last year into systemic abuse within the organization. Here is what Davis told reporters today about the path forward. We've made a lot of um, really significant and positive changes here over the last year. I think this new leadership team is going to continue to do that work, and I think we should be given a chance to prove that. But I also think that this is a club that has done a tremendous amount of good in this community over the years, and that's the legacy that we're going to bring forward. Asking fans to give her a chance. Meanwhile, the Thorns kick off training camp next week while the Timbers open their season in a month. You are watching KGW.